for Fred Kenny today did not seem to be anything too special. He had gotten up and gone to work as he had done for the past ten years. He was married to a wonderful named Martha. They had never had any children and sometimes he wished that they had. But all in all he had a good life and was happy with the way things had been gone lately. As Fred arrived at work that day the talk was about nothing but the big lottery jackpot that was going to be drawn that night. The jackpot was said to be over $100 million. Fred had made a mental note to himself to stop at the store on his way home. He wanted to buy a chance at the big jackpot. In the break room Giles Allen was taking dollar bills from anyone that might be interested in buying in on a chance at the lottery drawing. They would split the winnings if they won between all of the participants. Fred thought that what the heck it sounded good to him and he bought a chance that afternoon. But when Fred had left work that afternoon he had stopped at the local convenience store and bought his own ticket. This ticket he put into his pocket and left it there. He would check the numbers in the morning. But while Fred was in the store he ran into Giles who was waiting to buy the tickets for the office. They both joked about what they were going to do with the money if they won. It had been a pleasant experience. But, just as Giles reached the lady at the lottery machine the machine shut down. He was too late for the drawing and would have to wait until the next drawing in two days. As Giles looked at the date on his lottery tickets he cringed. He had known that the lottery machine was going to stop the lottery sales. The line had been so long and he had been late. Giles went out the front door of the store and told Fred what had happened. But Fred didn't think that he was going to win the jackpot anyways. He told him that the lottery probably would still have a large jackpot the next week. But Giles had insisted that he needed to do something. He hinted around, actually just about begged Fred to let him and the other people at the office a chance with the tickets that he had bought. But something had told Fred that was not a good idea and he had thanked Giles but kept the tickets. Fred went home that day and did not put much thought into the drawing that was held late that night. When Fred got up in the morning he got the surprise of a lifetime. He must have checked the winning numbers that the television was showing 100 times. But yes he was the winner that the lady on the television was saying had won over 150 million dollars. After taxes our lucky winner will make over $110 million for he and his family. Fred just stood there and shook. He needed to go to the store and have the clerk check the ticket. Fred was a nervous wreck and as he rounded the corner to the little store he saw a sign on the door. It said this store sold the winning ticket to one of the largest jackpots in the history of the lottery. This was a sign telling Fred that he had indeed won the lottery. So with a smile on his face he walked into the store. But there was Giles standing there. As Fred went to tell the clerk that he was the winner of the lottery Giles came over. Giles looked over at the ticket that Fred was holding and knew immediately that Fred had won the lottery. For just a second Giles lost his mind. But what he said to the clerk nearly floored Fred yes my friend and I were in here last night buying tickets for the jackpot for the people that we work with. There are 12 of us who will be sharing this large pot and with that he put his arm on Fred's shoulder. Fred was about to say something to the clerk when without warning there were photographers in the store along with newspaper reporters. Fred watched in horror as Giles made a big deal of the other people who were going to be sharing the winnings. But before everything got out of control Fred yelled. I am not sharing this money with anyone. I bought this ticket and Giles arrived too late. He wanted to have the ticket part of the company sharing, but I told him no. He was too late and had missed the cut off time. So are you telling us that you claim this ticket for yourself and yourself only, one reporter asked him. Yes this is my ticket. If the store manager watches the tape from last night he will see that I was alone and that Giles missed the cut off point for purchase. This ticket was my own ticket. Giles did his best to put on the face of a man who was in shock. He wanted to play this up for the media. Fred, you know that ticket belongs to you and your co-workers. We were supposed to share the winnings. Don't be like that he told Fred and the crowd. By this time the crowd was getting very large and some of the people who were going to split the prize had shown up also. 
each one of them agreed with Giles that Fred had been in on the group purchase. By this time Fred was furious. Giles had lied to everyone about what had happened with the lottery ticket. But when Fred went to the lottery office he found out something even more shocking. He was not going to be able to get his money until there was a formal hearing. Giles and his co-workers had filed a lawsuit saying that they owned the ticket. Chapter 2, Chapter 2 Now came the calls. There were the calls from the media, the calls from the family, and then the calls from people that Fred or his wife. When Fred had told Martha that they were now millionaires she had thought of so many things that she wanted to do with the money. She had spent the money a hundred times over and had even looked at a new car. When Fred had come home that night and told her what had happened her world had crashed. She had never had any money, at least the money that this kind was. With this type of money she and Fred would not need to work ever again and they could enjoy their lives while they were still relatively young. But now the jerk Giles had lied and told everyone that the money was to be split twelve ways of all things. What they needed was a lawyer and a good one at that. Without the assistance of a good lawyer they could face losing over $130 million. That was not acceptable. Perry Mason was at home getting ready for another busy day at the office. He was trying to feed his son Perry in his high chair and was having very little luck. It was playtime for his son and every time Perry tried to feed him he spit out his food. Finally after what seemed forever his son finally settled down and started to eat. Sally had Girl Scouts in the afternoon so Jen the nanny was going to be taking her and the baby over to the meeting. Della was back to work full time and their schedule had been full and neither one of them had time for the life that they looked forward to. Della had been reading the newspaper about the man who had won the lottery. The people that worked at the office with him claimed to have been in a pool where the money should be shared. But, the man who was buying the tickets for the people at work was on video buying tickets after the man who said he had bought his own. Because of the long line at the lottery counter, the man who was buying several tickets and claimed that the money should be shared was too late. His tickets had not been for that night, they were for the next drawing. The case was very intriguing. As Perry and Della headed out to the school to drop off Sally the conversation was about the man who had won the lottery. Perry found the story very interesting. He knew that for money people were willing to do just about anything. This was a huge sum of money and he was sure that someone was looking to cash in on the ticket and he was sure that there was something else involved. When they arrived at the office Della was surprised to see that Mrs. Kenny had called to make an appointment with Perry early that morning. This was not going to be the usual case that Perry Mason and Della handled. But it could be very interesting indeed. Fred was glad when his wife had made an appointment with Perry Mason. But, he wondered if her choice was the best one for them. Perry Mason was a criminal attorney who was very good at his job. He was known for his many cases where he had gotten his clients off on murder charges. This was about the winnings from a lottery ticket. As Fred and his wife made their way to Mr. Mason's office they were very nervous. Mr. Mason was a large man with a kind face who shook their hands steadily. His wife Della was his secretary and she had a kind face. As Fred told Mr. Mason about the purchase of the lottery ticket and what had happened on that fateful evening Perry listened intently. Perry put his hand on his chin thinking for a few minutes. I saw in the newspaper this morning that there is a videotape of you purchasing the ticket and then a video of Giles Allen purchasing several tickets a few minutes later. With that tape and the timing I believe that we will have a good chance of winning the case. However, this could take months to be settled. I will have a man by the name of Paul Drake look into this and see what else he can find out. Don't worry about it right now. The lottery has not made a decision and I will file the papers for a hearing date as soon as possible he told them with a smile. Giles had arrived at the office that morning to find everyone confronting him about the lottery and their money. It was all that he could do to answer their questions. He didn't know what was going to happen himself. So he told them right now the lottery is going to hold a meeting. Fred is fighting for the right to keep the money. Of course he is lying, we are on tape talking just before he purchased the ticket that won. But I think that we should get a lawyer. 
I am sure that Fred is going to get one he told the group. Now this was a problem they were going to have to come up with some money for a lawyer and that could be expensive. But after a lot of grumbling it was decided that they would hire a lawyer. One of the men had a brother that was a lawyer and they met with him that afternoon. It was there at the lawyer's office that the members of the office found out just how weak their case was. The best that they could hope for was the clerk at the store remembering the two men and overhearing something. The store had been so busy that evening and Giles was sure that no one had heard anything because he was lying about the whole thing. What a stupid thing for me to do. I am not going to get anything out of this but humiliation. Giles thought to himself. As the group left the office together everyone was talking at once. Giles promised them that he would call Fred and see if they could work something out. Don't worry the money should be ours. We will win he told them. Chapter 3 Giles Allen was in a bind a real bind. He had lied to the media his wife his family his co-workers. He had lied to everyone and soon the truth was going to come out. He knew that there was no avoiding what was going to happen. Think Giles. Think. There has to be a way out of this. That was when Giles thought that he might go to Fred's house and talk to him face to face. But as he pulled up to the house he saw Fred and his wife's car in the driveway and he wanted to talk to Fred alone. Martha might not go along with what he said and he just wanted to talk to Fred alone. Fred was a man and he had known Fred for years. I will give him a call he thought to himself. Fred had been sitting at the kitchen table when he saw Giles pull up to the front of the house. He had gotten out of his seat and started towards the front door when he saw him leave. Martha had been at the table with him and asked what's wrong. Giles just pulled up to the house and then pulled away. That man is so much trouble. He is not welcome here. If he thinks that he is going to get one cent of the money from that ticket, he is wrong, dead wrong. Martha didn't like what Giles was saying. Money was indeed the root of all evil. Is this money worth all of the headache, she asked her husband. It is our money and I am not going to be robbed of what is legally mine. How the money is spent is for us to decide not someone else. But, now Giles has the whole office on his side. I am going to have to quit. I can't work there anymore. Not with this going on he told her rather sadly. Fred had always liked his job and even with the lottery winnings he had hoped that he could keep his job. But Giles had ruined everything. A time that should have been wonderful was now a time of fights and loss of friends. Everyone wanted the money and he thought that no one cared how they got it. Fred and Martha were in the living room watching more television news about the lottery winner and how there was a dispute about the winnings when the phone rang. Fred picked up the phone and was surprised to hear Giles on the other end of the line. Fred was in no mood to talk to him and said what do you want, rather rudely. Martha had been watching her husband from her chair and could tell from his tone that the man on the other end of the phone was Giles Allen. Just hang up on him. He can talk to Perry Mason. That is why we are paying a lawyer. Martha told her husband. But Fred couldn't get rid of Giles. He kept telling him that he wanted to come up with some sort of agreement. Fred wasn't sure why he said that he would go and meet Giles at the house, but he did. I will only be gone for a few minutes. Fred promised Martha. Della had gone home that evening, late as usual. She had finally arrived home at just after 10. But she wanted to do some more work online. She wanted to look on some of the dating sites and see if Joe was there. About midnight she finally came across a site called Lovers Forever. There she found Joe. He seemed to be very popular and there had been several hits placed on his site. The latest contact had been made today. The site was apparently unaware that the man had been murdered. Della took a copy of the site and finally climbed into bed after midnight. Perry and Paul had completed their on-site investigation and had both headed home. Perry had a lot of work to do and was reading some of his many legal books. He was not a specialist on the laws of the lottery. Each lottery had its own rules and things varied from state to state. 
but the lottery hearing was now set for two weeks from the next Tuesday and he needed to have everything ready for the hearing. In California the lottery commissioner had the final word on where the winnings went and 90% of the time the decision was made at the hearing. The lights burned at the Drake house late that night also. Paul was watching the video that had been enhanced once more. He wanted to make sure that he didn't miss anything. The tape was three hours long and perhaps there was something on the tape before the shots that were heard or afterwards. But sleep got to him and Paul ended up going to bed after watching just half of the tape. Giles was at home nervous about what he was going to say to Fred about the lottery. He needed to convince Fred to give him some of the money. He needed it bad and he just had to get some of that money. When he heard the doorbell ring, he assumed that it was Fred. But as he called come in he saw a flash of a gun and went down. He closed his eyes and died almost instantly. The cold-hearted killer cleaned the pistol off completely and placed it on the floor. As they looked around the room and were satisfied that no one had seen them they walked out of the back door and into the night. Fred arrived at Giles S. house at around 11. He knocked on the door and found it partly open. But as he walked in the door he found Giles dead. He had been shot. When he saw the gun on the floor Fred picked it up. He didn't see or hear anything and called the police. Chapter 4, Chapter 4 The police were quick to arrive and Fred was held for questioning. He knew that he was in deep trouble. Everyone in the city probably the whole state had heard about his disagreement with Giles. They had been fighting about that stupid lottery ticket and now Giles had been murdered. The worst thing about a murder is the family that loses a loved one. As Marie Allen arrived at her house with her two children she saw Fred's car and the police and knew that something was very wrong. The ticket, she knew it, it had caused more problems once again. Fred looked out the window and saw Giles' wife pulling up in the driveway. He tried to excuse himself and go out to see her. But the police would not allow him to do so. They wanted to talk to her first. Marie had two small children with her John and Melanie who were still not in school yet. He liked Marie and felt terrible about what had happened. As Fred was allowed to leave he headed out to his car. Marie started to yell at him that darn old lottery ticket. Now you are going to jail for murder and Giles is dead. Was it worth it? Fred tried to talk to Marie but she just wasn't listening. He had done nothing and he had lost a man that he had called a friend before this lottery ticket thing had happened. As he went home to his family, he knew that he needed to call Perry Mason. Perry had been home with his family that evening. He was now used to being a family man and could not remember hardly any time without Della and his two children. Sally was becoming a preteen now and Perry Jr. was walking. Where had time gone, he wondered. Della and his first wedding anniversary was coming up and he had big plans for the celebration. When he had asked Della's sister if she would take the two children for a few days she had been thrilled to get the chance for her little boy Mike and Perry to get a chance to play together a little more. They had been raised almost as brothers more than cousins anyways. He had made reservations on the Queen Mary once more for a three-day weekend. That was where he had fallen in love and they had been married. It was just a beautiful ship and he knew that it was Della's favorite spot too. Perry had gone into his home office that morning to do some work from home when his answering service called. He was just picking up the paper and read about the murder of Giles Allen. When he heard the Fred Kenny was trying to reach him he knew that he had another murder mystery on his hands. Della came into the office with a cup of coffee and could hear Perry talking to Fred. She knew by the tone of the conversation that something serious had happened and when Perry hung up the phone she took her usual seat. Perry looked at his wife and shook his head. Giles Allen was murdered last night and Fred Kenny found the body. He has not been arrested or charged with anything, but he picked up the gun he told her as he leaned over and gave her a kiss. Della shook her head. People were always doing such stupid things. Fred should have never touched the gun. Now they had his fingerprints on the gun. He had called the police to report the murder that was something good. Fred is going to meet us at the office at 10. He and Martha are going to come in and we will go over everything. 
The sad thing is that Giles had not a leg to stand on. He would have had no chance with the money. But I don't think that Fred is guilty of anything. With that Della picked up the phone and called Paul Drake. Paul was at his home office himself playing with the baby when he got the call from Della. He was not surprised as he had read the paper that morning. I will go to the Allen house and see what I can find out. Then I will get right back to you. Paul told his friend. Sally was busy with her brother playing in the den. There was no school today. She had teachers conferences and so she was going to be home with Jen and her brother. Her aunt Michelle was going to pick her up at noon and they were going to do some shopping. Michelle had become a staple at the Mason household and she had even taken Perry Jr. with her a couple of times. She was a good woman just in no condition to take care of a child full time. Perry and Della headed out to the office a little after 9 that morning and arrived to the bustle and hustle of an office that knew trouble was brewing. They had read the newspaper and knew about Fred finding Giles murdered. Gertie had already gotten out some of the paperwork that she knew Della and Perry would need. Della and Perry were well aware that it was just a matter of time before Trag showed up with a warrant for Fred's arrest. Lieutenant Trag had been up most of the night investigating the murder of Giles Allen. The man had been shot at close range while facing his assailant. It had been a very messy scene. He had hated telling the wife. She had two small children and had gone to stay with her parents for the night. On the gun he had found Fred Kenny's fingerprints and on his phone he had found that Giles had called him three times that day. Fred had returned two of the phone calls. As he had asked around the neighborhood that morning no one remembered seeing any other cars at the house. When all the tests were completed he was sure that he had enough evidence to bring it to the district attorney. That was then he remembered something that had been mentioned in the paper. Fred and his wife had hired an attorney about the lottery ticket. They had hired Perry Mason. That is where I will find him he thought to himself. because he had gotten to the store late. Cole told the court. So, Giles Allen knew that he might miss the cut-off. Berger asked him. Yes. If you miss the cut-off your tickets are only good for the next drawing. That would be on the following Tuesday. Cole told the court. Did Giles Allen realize that he had a ticket that was only good for the following week? Berger asked him. Oh yes he threw a fit and swore and carried on for 10 minutes about the ticket. But there was nothing that I could do or anyone else for that matter. The numbers were being drawn and the machine closed down. Cole told the court. Thank you sir. Your witness Mr. Mason. Berger turned and spoke to Perry. Perry got up slowly from the desk where he had been sitting and approached the witness. I have just a couple of questions for you. Did at any time Giles speak to Fred Kenny after the purchase of the ticket? Yes when he saw that the ticket wasn't any good for the drawing that night he went over to Fred and just about begged him to share the ticket with him. But Fred wouldn't and Giles started yelling. As they were walking out of the store and down the sidewalk I could hear him still yelling at Fred. Cole told Perry and the courtroom. Were you in the store the next morning when Fred and Giles came in? Perry asked. Yes I was there. Fred came in about five minutes after Giles with the winning ticket. He came over to me and I confirmed that he indeed had the winning ticket. What did Giles say when he heard that Fred had the winning ticket? Mason asked Cole. He acted completely different than I had expected him to. I started to say that I didn't want any trouble in the store when Giles came over and put his arm around Fred's shoulder. He acted as though they were the best of friends. Fred pulled away but when Giles made the announcement that everyone in his office was going to be sharing the winnings I almost dropped. He told the court. What did you do? Mason asked. Without warning within a few moments the media arrived. The store was a media circus and it was all I could do to make sure that nothing got broken or stolen while everyone was there. There were people in my store that I had never seen before or since. 
You couldn't even move. Cole told him. You stand to get a lot of money out of this sale. Is that correct? Perry asked. Yes I am. The store gets a commission on all lottery sales. Cole answered. How much are you going to get? Mason asked. Hamilton Berger stood up and said your honor the counselor is getting way off base. I have allowed him to cross-examine Mr. Cole with a large leeway, however, it is not pertinent to the case as to how much money Mr. Pride is going to get from the sale of the ticket. Perry Mason turned around and addressed the judge. On the contrary, this is a large sum of money that the store is going to get. Who won the money is of no concern to Mr. Pride. He gets the same amount of money from the state either way. Mason argued. The judge thought for a moment and said I will allow the question. But move along please. Perry Mason turned to Mr. Pride again and said how much money are you going to get? Cole Pride looked Mason in the eyes and replied my store will receive $50,000 plus a new machine. We also will become one of the stores that presents new tickets first. We will become preferred lottery providers he answered. Does the preferred status also give you a larger commission on any winnings in the future? Perry asked. Yes, instead of getting 2% of all winnings I will now receive 3% of all winnings. Cole told him. That sounds like a lot of money. How much of a difference will that 1% make? Perry asked him. With the new commission it could make me about 10,000 or so a year. Cole answered. How long have you known Giles Allen? Perry asked. I have known him for years. He has been coming and buying lottery tickets. Cole answered. Where were you when Giles was murdered? Mason demanded. I was at the store. Cole answered. No let me look at the testimony of the police officer at the scene. He listed a man that matches your description as one of the men who were in the crowd at the murder scene. Do you want me to recall him? Cole looked out into the audience and saw the officer. He knew by the expression on his face that the policeman recognized him. Yes. I was there he admitted. I say that you were there because you are the murderer Mr. Pride. I suggest that Giles had been causing you a headache. You hadn't gotten your money because of him and the store is going bankrupt. You need the money. Mason accused him. That is the stupidest thing that I ever heard. Everyone knows that the money would be mine eventually. You can't prove a thing. Cole countered. But I can Mr. Pride. You had been to the bank that day begging for more time on a loan. The bank would only give you 30 days. I say that you went to Giles Allen and told him that you would give him some of the winnings if he would drop the lawsuit. I have Paul Drake here in the audience with Mark Summers. Do you recognize him Mr. Pride? He is the man that you stole the gun from. The gun that shot and killed Giles Allen. Perry Mason nearly shouted at him. With this Cole Pride knew that he was caught. He sneered as he told the court. Giles wanted to keep the hearing and try to get more money. He was stupid. I offered him $5,000 and he left. I just shot him and would do it again. The trial was over and once more Fred Kenny was a free man. Perry and Della congratulated him and Martha and went home. As the husband and wife went to their home they were greeted by their two children. Life was good at the Mason household.